What's going on everyone? Let's start this off by preheating our oven to 230 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Grab yourself three brown onions, slice them in half, and then into quarters, and we can leave the skin on this time. Once that's done, we can place these onto a large oven tray lined with parchment paper. With three unpeeled carrots, all we need to do is give them a rough chop, and place them onto the oven tray. Grab yourself one large leek, slice it in half so it's easier to work with, and give it a rough chop. Once you get to the root, you can slice it in half, and most of the time there is some dirt inside those roots. Just trim off the roots, and if you have one, you can place them into a compost bin. And these will add no flavor to our stock, so there's no point in using them. Once that's done, we can place the chopped leeks onto the oven tray. Here is one whole bulb of garlic, and all we need to do with this is just slice it in half. Once it's sliced, place it onto our oven tray with the other vegetables and evenly spread them all out, just so they're not overlapping each other. In this bowl here, I have 1.5 kilo or 3.3 pounds of beef neck bones with a little bit of the meat still attached, along with 1.5 kilos or 3.3 pounds of beef marrow bones, which you can get from your local butcher for very cheap. Lay the bones on top of the vegetables, and if you have to, you can do this over two oven trays, and just make sure that the bones are not overlapping each other. When you've got all of that laid out, we want to roast these in our oven for 20 minutes until those bones are deeply browned. After 20 minutes, remove them from the oven, carefully flip the bones over so we can get even roasting, and place these back into the oven for a further 20 minutes. So then after 40 minutes total in the oven, and the bones and vegetables are very well roasted, grab yourself a large stock pot, place in the roasted bones, as well as the vegetables, and all of those delicious juices that are on the tray. Give three celery stalks a rough chop and chuck them into the pot. Then remember all of those times that I've said save it for a stock, where we can then chuck all of those scraps into the pot, but obviously only put in enough, making sure that it's not completely overflowing. Add in one tablespoon or six grams of black peppercorns for a piney aroma and flavor, along with three bay leaves for a nice herbal background flavor. When all of those ingredients are in, fill your pot with enough cold water to fill it three quarters of the way full. And just so you know, I'm using an 8.7 litre stock pot. Place your stock pot onto your stovetop over a high heat and bring it to a boil. Once boiling, reduce the heat to low. Carefully push all of those ingredients down, making sure that it's fully submerged in the water. Place a lid onto the pot with it slightly ajar and allow this to simmer from anywhere between 6 to 24 hours. The longer the better. And I'll leave a few important notes about this in the description below. This has now been two hours and most of that veg has really wilted down. Give it a check to see how much water has reduced and top it up with hot water back to the original level. At this point, it's also a good time to check if there's any scum buildup from the bones, which we can carefully spoon out into a bowl. Once you've checked your stock and it's looking good, place the lid back on and continue simmering from anywhere between four to 22 hours and the timing is completely up to you. And we do want to check this every one to two hours just to remove any scum buildup and doing this will create a better and cleaner end product. Then after six hours, I'm going to remove the lid, turn it off the heat and let this cool down for 30 to 40 minutes. Once cooled, remove it from your stovetop and very carefully pour it through a fine sieve into another pot or storage container, making sure to catch all of those scraps. And then with those scraps, drain off any remaining stock and just get rid of them. You're then left with this beautiful light brown beef stock, which will have a layer of rendered fat on the surface. We can gently scoop out the fat into a bowl, being careful not to remove any of our stock. And it doesn't matter too much if you can't remove all of that fat, as we're going to place this in the fridge from anywhere between six to eight hours, and all of that fat will rise to the surface and set, making it really easy to remove. This has now been in the fridge overnight and you can see that that fat has surfaced and the stock has turned into a jelly. We can then spoon out the fat, placing it into a bowl. You're probably wondering why this has turned into a jelly and this is from the collagen, which is the protein that's in the connected tissue of the bones. And when it's cooled, those proteins realign themselves and produce a bouncy gelatin. Anyway, once the fat's been removed, you're left with this clear, smooth and gelatinous beef stock. With the fat, it can be used to roast vegetables, but if you don't want to use it, just throw it in the bin. We can then store this into our desired containers or jars. And then really quickly, I'll show you how we can use this. Place a saucepan onto your stovetop and pour in that gelatinous beef stock. 
place it over a medium heat and allow the stock to melt, stirring it frequently until it's nice and smooth. Before using this beef stock for anything, make sure to do this step, as you can easily and accurately control the measurements. And with it being gelatinous, it's a lot harder to tell how much you're using. So then once it's back into liquid form, it's all good to be used in your desired dishes. I'm then going to pour this into 200 milliliter portions. That way, when it sets, I know exactly how much I'm using. So then after all of that, we have the stock that's been in the fridge and is set. And we also have the stock that's been slightly heated back into liquid form. Also, like I said before, it's a lot easier to liquefy the stock before we use it. This way we can have accurate and correct measurements. This stock recipe here makes three liters, but it all depends on the size of your stock pot. Obviously, if you have a smaller pot, you'll need to use less bones, vegetables, and water. This can be stored in the fridge for up to five days, and it can also be frozen for up to six months. This recipe is great for sauces and soups, which I'll definitely be using it for. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and to help my channel grow and consider subscribing along with turning on that bell notification so you don't miss out on the fantastic things to come. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.